Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another CNBC Tech Check live stream. I'm so pleased to be here this morning in the connected fitness space with Ali O'Reilly and my friend Steve Jung from Kindred Ventures. Welcome, guys. I'm so glad that we were able to do this. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. Okay, so I am one of these people who years ago said, I will never work out at home. I will always be going to a gym. And let me tell you, I just moved into a new place two months ago. The first thing we did was create an at-home gym. I got my Peloton. I got a treadmill. I do not have a tonal yet, though, Allie. Tell me, though, what the... Uh, you guys were around long before the pandemic. Tell me, in your words, what the pandemic has done for your business. Well, what, what the pandemic has done for our business is it's really accelerated the shift to at-home. At-home is, you know, as you noticed, something that started many, many years ago. And, and as people lost access to their gyms, um, you know, through, through shutdowns, they started to build home gyms. Um, in our case, one thing that we have done uniquely different is, is we didn't just come at this trying to build a cardio experience or bring a group fitness experience into the home. Um, it was actually our goal to bring an entire an entire personal training experience into the home. Uh, so Tonal is a digital uh, strength training machine. It's like a digital weight machine uh, that is about the size of a TV. It mounts to your wall. It doesn't take up very much space. Uh, and it has an entire personal trainer built in that will guide folks through their workouts using AI to personalize it and multi-week programs to help people achieve their goals. So really, it used to be that if you wanted access to a personal trainer, if you wanted access to, to a weight room and a lot of equipment, you'd have to go to the gym to get all of that. Uh, and now, actually, with you, know, you can literally get out of bed and you know, three minutes later be working out with a personal trainer and you know, get ready right before you go to work. And people love it. It's amazing because they get real results without all that overhead. So you're saying I could have saved myself a bunch of money a few months ago if I didn't go out and buy all the weights and, you know, my husband got pretty much everything, including a rack, a tonal. And Steve, I'll come to you on this, would basically give you all of that. And Kindred Ventures, you guys invested in the seed round. What did you see at that time when you didn't know that there was going to be a pandemic bringing everyone into their homes and workouts into the home? Yeah, it's a good question. I mean, we're an early stage investor, so um, we often are investing pre-product. And so what I saw was Ollie, uh, one other engineer and a prototype mounted to a wall in his apartment. And so um, these are very early, humble beginnings. But he was an engineer out of Samsung and um, he had this he had this uh, notion and he was on fire about it. He was like, I had health problems uh, while I was working hard, you know, uh, 60, 80 hours a week at uh, Samsung. As an engineer and i just let it go like my my health deteriorated mm -hmm. and so i just thought why can't i build why can't i engineer a truly powerful product that can help me with strength training and uh, because strength training uh, under his doctor and physical therapist toolage was was the thing that got him healthy and back on his feet again and so this was like a, a passion that was like deep inside of him like coming out and saying, I want to build this. And, you know, back then it was, you know, uh, an early engineering prototype uh, as any hardware company uh, would have. And um, I think the I think the vision that he had has actually played out almost exactly to the team. So the original prototype is now this sleek, polished, high performance uh, uh, machine on your wall. But the three things that he talked about back then that are true today that um, are really exciting and different about Tonal to me is that one, it's taking all of the different weights, all the different machines that you might see in a gym and complaining it all in one uh, you know, device and hardware piece. And that is, that is truly interesting. It, it changes the square footage. It changes um, the cost, the total cost of ownership of having a complete strength training um, uh, set up at home or even in the office. Uh, the, uh, the second thing is that uh, they have a live aspect now. They have training yeah. video on screen, and that's and that's super interesting because that's scalable, and then you can do this remotely. You can do this uh, on your schedule, not on the trainer schedule. Uh, uh, Tonal Live is the is is what they just launched yesterday, which is this group online live fitness um, aspect. Kind of like uh, like Peloton. If if viewers have done Peloton, right, the class where you can actually do it live and the instructor's talking to you. And I guess like Ali, that was one of my questions when I first heard this. Are you late? to the live game. I mean, that's a lot of the reason why people buy into Peloton for myself. It's not necessarily, you know, the bike, but it's the idea of being able to participate in a group, measure yourself against others as well. Why are you guys just coming out with this? Um, we're not late. We're just incredibly innovative. Um, you know, I think when, when Steve was telling his story, I was reflecting on there was, there was this moment in the early days on all 
sorry, pre-tonal when I was getting healthy and I was at the gym and I noticed that all the personal trainers were in the weight room. Uh, they weren't in the cardio section. And so the experts who, who really know how to help you transform your life, transform your body, achieve your goals, they use strength training as their primary tool. The problem is the average person doesn't really know how to strength train properly. Absent tonal, you're going to fill up your garage with a bunch of equipment that the average person doesn't really know how to use. Uh, and so what we have is, is an element of personalization. You're calling me out there, into- Alan. Sorry. <laughs> well, it is, an, is an element of personalization that we've, we've brought, brought into the experience. And when you do our on-demand content, those videos aren't even pre-edited. They're being edited for you as you work out. We're personalizing the instruction, the pacing, the feedback on your form, the weight selections. And so for us to create a live experience where you could have the benefits of being live with, you know, with a live coach and, and, and other members in the experience with you, but still have that element of personalization, that's actually taking years of innovation. Right. But, you know, Peloton investors, they might argue that there's a lot of personalization with them as well. The way that you can stack workouts now um, and it gives you that cardio and weightlifting experience through one app. Do you guys, does Tonal, Steve, hit that cardio requirement, too, that let's face it, a lot of, you know, folks like to do. It's a bit more mainstream, perhaps, than weight training. Sure. I I think there's I think in the fitness world, uh, there's several things going on and, and they're all important. Right. There's it's not sort of a. Um, uh, black or white issue here. I think these are all part of a balanced wellness program. So cardio is very important in uh, connected fitness. Strength training is very important in connected fitness. Diet is also very important, right? Does, uh, does tonal hit on cardio or or no? No, it doesn't. But the, the important thing is that in strength training, there hasn't been any innovation, not on a hardware or software level. Mm-hmm. And so um, to speak to your last point, one of the things that I think is really interesting and different from some of the other connected fitness companies in the space is that Tonal from the beginning has always been focused on how do we create real innovation in the machine? If we can create real innovation in the machine. The machine is hardware and it's also software. If we can use machine learning and we can use adaptive response on weights and startup and prevent injuries and to personalize so that the responsiveness on the on the on the resistance training is moving with the person's progress, the, the end user's progress. Then we've done something that even trainers mm-hmm. in a gym with physical weights or Nautilus machines can't really do well. They're they're using sort of like eyeball techniques to, right. to maintain that. So this is using software. We're using real data and right. artificial intelligence and cloud right. and a lot of these tech trends. And you know, and, and go ahead, Steve. Well, I, you know, the I don't think that. I don't think that tonal could have existed 10 years ago. You know, tonal, this is the right time for tonal. This is the window of opportunity. Sensor technology is here. We have TensorFlow and other open source uh, ML and neural network technologies to be able to optimize what's happening inside the machine. Uh, we have this digital weight system that Ollie invented and has 45 patents for. Uh, uh, we have a, a cloud computing and media bandwidth. And the idea that there's a gig economy even around uh, instructors being able to be freelancers and even build a business um, mm-hmm. uh, through these platforms. And so I think all of these are coming into a head here where uh, companies like Tonal and Peloton have an opportunity yeah. to be the number one in their space. Now today, uh, Tonal is, uh, I think, 90% market share in the strength training, connected fitness strength training sector. Right. And, and also, I, I kind of hear your point. I mean, I'm someone who also likes to do a variety of workouts. I don't just rely on my Peloton. I have a rower. I have a regular treadmill, um, as you say, weight training. Um, but Ali, now that you're starting. Way, I have both. So I you agree. Have both. Yeah. Which ones? Uh, well, Tonal and Peloton, but I'm on, t- on uh, I'm on Tonal more because for me, strength training. Do you have a rower? Uh, I don't. I don't. Okay. I'm going to get you on that because I've got a good app for you. But Ali, as you look to this um, live streaming shows, then this clearly is a big part of what you guys want to do going forward. How do you look for instructors? Are you looking to any of the Peloton instructors who are doing so well? I mean, one of them is on Dancing with the Stars now, right? Created this huge fan group and saying, hey, why don't you sort of try us? Is there some overlap there? Is there something that you can propose to them, especially because you guys are pre-IPO? Well, we are we are creating our own, our own celebrities. Like the, the people, we're going out and finding amazing people and Remember, we're not in the entertainment business, right? If you want to, if you want to cycle, if you you're want to not work, in the run, entertainment business, we are not. In, we're in the outcomes. Should business, you be? Right? And so, no, I sh- no, we shouldn't, because because the reality is, um, if you're doing cardio, like the point of a cardio instruction, we all know how to bike and run. They're there to entertain you. They're there to motivate you. We're there to give you instruction. Now, it has mm-hmm. to be fun. It has to be motivating, and our members love it. And we have the highest engagement in the sector by a factor of two. 
So clearly people love it and clearly they're getting, they're getting results, but we look for a different type of coach. We look for coaches with, with a lot more credentials, a lot more capabilities. There's a deeper level of instruction. And look, I mean, if you want to go for, for a run, you should get on a treadmill or go outside. But when you hire a personal trainer, that's not what they do with you. Um, they use strength training to build muscle, um, increase bone, bone density and get your heart rate up all at the same time. And they do it to drive you towards a specific outcome. And that's what well, we're in the business of doing. What you're describing to me, Ali, though, is someone who sort of no nonsense wants to get down to their workout in and out, which I totally understand. But then does that sort of alienate a group of people who do love to go on Peloton and listen to these stories from their instructors? You know, I just wonder, is that is that selling your guys your product short by saying that you don't have to be entertainers, whereas I oh. think you know, connected fitness has always been somewhat from Jane Fonda to the Peloton instructors about the personality behind it. Well, we are, well, we, we are, are entertainers. Important. We're just not entertainers first. And so one of, one of the things that we get in a live experience is, is a greater amount of that entertainment factor, a greater amount of that coach connection, more community feeling. And we have over a dozen different modalities on our system. So it's not just about strength training. We have yoga, we have Pilates, we have boot camp classes. Because once we're in the home, once we're on the wall, we become the fitness portal for, for the entire household. So we do, do acknowledge and realize we have to serve the entire household and do all of these things. But when we were going out and finding our coaches, we weren't looking for people who are just entertainers. We looked at for, for a higher level of credential, a greater degree of depth, someone who's gonna be more focused on outcomes, um, credentials, programming. Um, how do you create a four week program to help someone achieve a goal? Um, what personal trainers do? Right. I think one thing is that you know, strength training and tonal are, are, are more different than it, it might look like from the outside than uh, a Peloton and cardio. So in cardio, you know, the more you need to fight boredom and create motivation, that's why there's soul cycle, right? That's why there's spin classes. And then that's why there's Peloton. It's that it was to fight that boredom, to get you to stay on it for 30 to 45 minutes. Um, in strength training, you're not fighting boredom because you're not sitting there doing, a, you're not literally spinning on a wheel in place right. for 45 minutes. What you're actually fighting is you're fighting injury. You're fighting um, improper technique. You're fighting imbalance of your physiological self, right? If you like, you know, you hear leg day, uh, uh, like chest day, you hear things like that. And the reason why they do that, the reason why that is because you're looking for a full, complete, balanced physiological outcome. Now, so what, Pel what Peloton has done has been incredible for cardio. And they're right. the market leader in cardio, but they're competing heavily with all these other companies that essentially have a very similar product. It's a stationary bike with a screen. And with some uh, with some light amount of data, now in strength training, what Tonal has done is pulled together all of that machinery, all of those different weights, and brought it, synthesized it into one fluid digital weight machine. Now, what happens once you use it? The data that they're collecting, like if you use Tonal, what you'll feel is you'll feel weights steadily increase on a curve. You'll feel it decrease. It's preventing injury. It's letting you uh, get acclimated to the particular exercise and technique. And so right. that's wow. the kind of stuff that Tonal's been um, focused in on. And look, you can create an entertainment first platform for sure, and that'll work. You can create a uh, deep technical moat on the product. And I think that also works. And that's been Tonal's strategy. Right. Let's, I mean, it's really interesting that you talk about things like um, repairing your body and injuries. And it really feels like your investor list reflects that. You guys have a lot of athletes. You just added LeBron James. I'm curious as to what he's going to be doing for the brand, but you've also got people earlier on like Steph Curry, Mike Tyson, Michelle Wee. Clearly there's something that they're seeing here and, and that whole idea of strength training too. Perhaps there needs to be, you know, greater education to the mainstream around this as well, right? Because most people a lot of folks I talk to, they do just want to get on a bike. And that's why SoulCycle and Peloton, et cetera, has been so successful. Talk a little bit about this recent investment, uh, Ali, from LeBron James and why athletes are so attracted to the product. Well, we, oh. have, we have between 20 and 30 different athletes who have invested in the business so far. And, and for all of them, it's, it's really the same. I mean, these are people who are exposed to all sorts of fitness solutions their entire careers. Um, it's something they've been doing from a young age. They've worked with the best coaches, the best trainers. Uh, and and what we've seen consistently is when they see Tonal, they, they instantly fall in love. Um, it was the same story from Serena Williams to Steph Curry to Tony Gonzalez to Sue Bird. All of them touched the Tonal and invested. Um, very, very similar. Do they all use it? Yes, they absolutely. All of them use it. As part of their regular. Yeah. And they use it, they use it with their coaches. They, they installed them oh. at home. 
yeah. um, during the pandemic, instead of going to, to their athletic training facilities, they're actually working out at home, oftentimes remotely with their coaches and their trainers. And it's about the fact that you can get a really, really efficient workout. In fact, those are the words that LeBron used in a recent conversation with him, is how efficient it is to have one machine that can do all of this in a really compact, uh, compact footprint. Um, and, in your home. and then the data that they get off of it. Uh, up until this well, point, we've been strength training. Yeah, we've been strength, strength training blind with no data. And now we actually have data. They can see their charts. They can see their progress. They can share that data with their coaches and their trainers. Um, and that, that that just completely transforms the game when it comes to strength. Do you guys, and sorry, I'm going to run through the rest a little quickly because yeah. we're over time, but I could talk about this for an hour. I'm sure you guys could too, or hours. Um, but I want to get a few things. Just as you say that, Ali, I'm curious, do you guys have any tie-ups with Whoop or Aura or Apple Watch? Is that something that you're looking at? Because as you say, that data is so important and Tonal fits into that. Or are you collecting it yeah. on your own? Yeah, we have, we have a deep integration with, with Apple Watch. We have an Apple Watch app and we're integrated with HealthKit and we use all that data. And at the Does end of the day, worry you? I mean, Apple, Apple's making its own moves and they're pretty good. They have some experience in hardware and they're we, getting we into fitness. We're not concerned in the least. We, we, at the end of the day, we view it as we're building a personal trainer and the more data we can get about our members, the better the decisions we can make on their behalf. Making okay. great quality decisions on top of, on behalf of our members is what makes us special. We've got some comments. Someone said, don't forget Richard Simmons. He's an investor also. <laughs> no. Maybe you no, hit I him think we should, just, okay. we should go after him. Yeah. The I'll, OG. We'll yeah. The OG. <laughs> to get you with, uh, you know, a different, maybe, maybe a different crowd. Someone else on YouTube said, and this is sort of, this is kind of what I'm looking at too. It says, I've had Tonal for two years. Peloton and Peloton Tread all serve their own purpose and are easily combinable. I agree with that sentiment, but that is a lot of money. And, you know, for the average person, how mainstream do you want to go with this? And how much is the tonal, first of all? And do you expect sort of that any household can have so this? So we, we view this market? as a 45 million household market. Strength training as a market in aggregate is larger, larger individually than cycling and larger than, um, uh, than, than running. Cardio combined, when you combine running and biking and, you know, ellipticals and rowers, all of that in aggregate is about the same size as strength. So it's a much, much larger, larger market. Uh, and if you're only going to get one piece of equipment, it should be the tonal because once someone turns 40, the one thing they should do for the rest of their lives is strength train, not cardio. Uh, you want to build muscle mass. You want to maintain bones, bone density, maintain flexibility, not put a bunch of mileage and wear and tear on your body. My bad. That was, a, I mean, I know Richard Simmons was a joke, but I had to ask, you know, I, I wasn't sure. You never know. You do have a star studded list. So thank you to that viewer who brought him up. Um, talk a little bit about consolidation in this industry. Steve, you were saying that there's a lot of different offerings. There's Peloton. There's so much in connected fitness. I mentioned that Apple is starting to do it. If Tonal is a strength training portion, you guys are in fact the leadership. Mm -hmm. Why not combine with a Peloton or someone else? Is that something that you guys would be open to let, let me let me jump in and the and then i would love to hear ollie's um opinion on this um the look we, we have two players right now in connected fitness we have uh we have peloton with uh 80 plus percentage um uh, retention rates and engagement and market share we have tonal uh 90 plus on uh, market share and a 99 retention rate uh, over the last three years uh, so really high engagement and retention rates. So there's clearly two companies of note right now. The how this plays out is you're funding some others out there, Steve. But I'll I'll let that slide. Yeah. Well, there there's there's two there's 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 a few trends that are happening right now. One is okay. three questions. Should you own your silo? Should you own your vertical? And should you do that with one machine or should you do that with a bunch of machines? Are you a community company? Are you a cloud company? Like what, what's the strategy to do that? Um, and then the other question is, is, you know, does it make sense to try to boil the ocean right now? Mm -hmm. uh, we're in the early days of connected fitness. And I think creating really defensible, interesting, game-changing products that aren't just basically taking LA Fitness or Planet Fitness or um, Equinox and then putting it in your living room or your or your bedroom. I don't think that that's the that's the move for technology innovation today. Yeah. And then the final question that um, I think is really interesting is that you know revenues and and market share and the the gross transaction and merchandise value of what's happening in this industry is eclipsing. Uh, the the large gym membership space, and I think that post COVID, I think this sticks. 
And I think people well, are going to start thinking about, you know, um, you know, the idea of bringing it to the home or having it at school, but not necessarily these large uh, communal clubs. And I think that that trend um, will stick. And so well, I think those three questions are, are worth thinking about when you think about, you know, you know, the independence of a connected fitness company. Uh, you know, I think the, all of these companies can be multi tens of billions of dollars companies because of the LTV, the lifetime value of the subscribers that they have. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm with you on that, on that stance. I said, I'm never going back to a gym, yeah. but I'm looking at a chart of Peloton at the same time. You know, it's really come down. I think there is some skepticism. Maybe people will grow. We're going to see that in the next months and years. Um, I've called, you know, I remember when I first started looking at Peloton, I said, oh, it's got to be a fad. I don't know if that's, I, I use it. Certainly not for me, but we don't know. But guys, I'm sorry. I could, I could really go on forever. We're getting kicked off the social channels. We got some more live streams to do. We got to go. But um, it's a space that is definitely so interesting. Steve, Ali, um, I said this with Dick Hostel a while ago too. We're going to try out some of these workouts. I'm going to try Tonal and I'm going to get you on a few of the apps I use too. Sound good? Amazing. Thanks okay. for having us. Thank you so much, guys. Talk to you soon. Bye.